Yeah, I think that's this is this, it is down here, isn't it? I don't know, is it? Yeah, we came up and went that way, didn't we? Because there's the. This is what I'm saying. You've got to remember this stuff. The date is the 8th of May, 2021, and Thailand is two weeks into yet another lockdown. Just yesterday, I had a friend message me saying that they no longer wanted to come to Thailand because they'd watched a YouTube video and they now feel completely depressed. The truth is, there's plenty of things you can do in Thailand right now. You just have to be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. What is up guys, this is Brett here from brettdev.com and yes, I am in the jungle with a very cool new hat. If this is the first time you've been here, this isn't a hiking channel, however, today I am on a hike. Usually what I talk about on this channel is moving to Thailand, working online and all of that good stuff. If you are new here or if you're not new here and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. And also make sure you check out that link in the top left corner of the video because that's going to be really, really helpful for you. I hope you enjoy the video guys and let's get into it. So guys, me and uh, my friend Matt, who you saw in a previous video, have decided to go for a hike. There are a bunch of hiking trails in Chiang Mai and this one is probably how long did you how long would you say it took us to get here? Less than five minutes. Less than five minutes on the bike. As you can see, I've got a really cool hat now to stop me from burning my dome. And um We're about to get eaten by dogs. I noticed that fence to come in What would Dave do in this situation? Hi. Bangkok diaries. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I don't know why you're so scared of dogs, Dave. <laughs> you just ignore them like this. You just ignore them and they go away. Look, they all bark and no bite. What does this say? So guys, there was just a sign coming up to this hiking trail and we weren't sure what it said. It, um, it was all written in Thai. And that's where Google Translate comes in. So you just pull out your phone, scan it, and it will scan the image of the text and translate it to English. I went to a shop the other day called Decathlon. Apparently it's a global brand, but they've got one in Thailand. It's one of my favorite shops. And not only did I buy this amazing hat, but I also bought a hiking stick. I don't know why, I don't really need one. But as I say, I just thought I'd get all the gear. It's actually probably the second time I've ever been hiking in my life. Okay. It's up there then, is it? Go this way. Yeah. Apparently, you know that sound you can hear? That, um... I made a video recently and I said, it's a bird that sounds like an angle grinder. But somebody commented on that video and pointed out that that is not birds you can hear. That is actually insects. Thailand has something like the loudest insects in the world. And those are tiny little bugs that you can hear making that sound. I thought that was amazing. Loneliness in Thailand. I've had a few people ask me this question. Matt, do you feel lonely out here in Thailand as an expat? Um, no. Well, this is long and short of that. Uh, not really. Uh, like anywhere, you sort of get to know people, don't you? Locals, expats, yeah. people from your own country. Uh, and even if you don't, you can actively try and engage in that. There's like clubs, bars, all the sort of amenities in the West. 
It's a huge well, question, you... though. A lot of people yeah. say that to me. They say, hey, Brett, how do you cope with the loneliness? And I'm, uh... Well, I, I don't. I don't get lonely. <laughs> I think it depends largely on your personality, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're like me and you fucking hate people... Hang on. We've got to remember these sort of things because we're going to come back down here and then go, fuck, did we come up this way or that way? A few moments later... Yeah, I think that's... This is... This, it is down here, isn't it? I don't know, is it? Yeah, we came up and went that way, didn't we? Because there's the... This is what I'm saying, you've got to remember this stuff. And just like that, we were lost. Fortunately for us, it didn't take long for us to get our bearings and start to make our way back. But that wasn't before we stumbled across what might be the most epic waterfall in all of Thailand. These hiking trails are obviously open to the public, but I don't think that many people use them. When I came before, I was the only one. Only person that I saw. Ooh. Look at this view. Wow. This is a waterfall, right? That's not so much a waterfall as a trickle at the moment, is it? But yeah, it's a trickle. When I it came space. before, it's completely dry. Oh, right. That's OK. So we, what you need is a really big monsoon flood. Yeah, that'd be cool. Well, it's rainy season now, right? It's, it is, yeah, yeah. Or well, starting. Yeah. That waterfall goes all the way down there, guys. And the bottom of this waterfall is actually where I recorded my video, uh, my five biggest regrets coming to Thailand. It's shot at the bottom of this waterfall. I'll put a link up in the top corner. So if you guys want to go and check it out, you can. And uh, I don't know if you can see that, but that's Chiang Mai city down there, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's certainly the outskirts, isn't it? There's the co convention center and stuff like that. So oh, it's a bit more over there, I think. But yeah, it's definitely the outskirts of the city. Now I read online that you can, um, you can cut around the back of this waterfall, but apparently there's a huge hornet's nest. <laughs> you warn right. me about this stuff afterwards, don't you? Yeah. Oh, there's a lion's den just up there as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's where the wasp's nest is. Right, I can, uh, wasps now as well. Awesome. Oh, hornets. <laughs> All right, okay. I can't remember. Somebody basically said, I think it's here, because they said, when you walk across the waterfall, you have to, there's a passage where you have to cut through and there's a wall to the left and the bees get you there as you go through the passage so I'm thinking it's through here what you mean right next to that wall there no, right here in front of us that's what I mean right next to that wall in fact there's one sat on that just landed what, there is, is that a hornet or I don't know yeah it looks like a dragonfly oh right okay I just saw it land I'm going to risk it I'll stay here Brett is now risking life and limb <laughs> For your entertainment pleasures. <laughs> I'm safe. Good oh. <laughs> right. What? You're going to get stunned. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. <laughs> There's the city there, look. Oh, wow. That's a better view. Here we are, guys, on top of a waterfall. Yeah, be careful you don't slip, mate. Yeah, that's like that. I suppose this video answers another question because I often get questions from you guys saying What do you do Brett? Do you not get bored? 
Yeah. No. <laughs> you just go to the bar. What do you do when you're not going to the bar? Well, I never go to the bar because I don't drink. <laughs> These hornets. Oh, again. the hornets of death. Yeah. Dun dun dun. I don't know about this hat, you know. It's just making my head really hot. Matt was just saying how fresh the air is. Um, man, this drives me crazy. People talking about Chiang Mai in the burning season. Who wants to live somewhere where you get pollution all year? <laughs> Look at this. Um, London. It's uh, a bit of Beijing. It's absolutely <laughs> perfect. Yeah. It's not pollution in Chiang Mai all year, you fucking donuts. Write <laughs> that in the comments. It's pollution for two to three months okay there is pollution between i would say february march and april mid-feb they start burning the crops and the forests and stuff and the pollution always ends in mid-april if you know about songkran the big water fight songkran is a water festival and it's people call it the thai new year but it's actually a celebration of the rainy season yeah like it's like some agricultural thing. So every year, on the 13th to the 15th of April, they throw water around to celebrate the fact that the rain is coming. And when the rain comes, the pollution stops because it's raining all the time, right? The rain clears the air. Then you've got nine months of absolutely crystal clear weather. I mean, it's May now. It's rainy season now. It'll get worse with the rain. It'll start getting heavy rains in June, July. And then from... I would say August, September, you just have absolutely perfect weather all the way through to February where they start burning and then yes, you have burning season start. It's crazy, isn't it, Matt? People yeah, are talking about this. Yeah, it's, it's a well overblown topic. and so overblown. Uh, I, I never quite under understood it because for me, largely, even living here through one, it, it's actually not that bad. It's like sometimes you, it's a bit misty on the mountains and you think, oh, that's a bit smoggy. But it, I don't, don't my eyes don't sting. I don't cough or anything like that. It's, I can go about my day normally and through burning season without actually worrying. <laughs> this is the thing, guys. So many people like if you if you scroll down, you read those comments underneath this video, you'll just see everybody who's a bloody expert telling you what to do. None of them will have a profile picture. <laughs> None of them will even have a proper name, and they'll be writing down there like they're fucking. They know absolutely everything. If you know everything, start your own channel. <laughs>